Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. It's good to have you here today. Just a couple of announcements before we continue. If you have not picked up an Epiphany Word, there's still a white bowl on the usher's table uh, for you to grab one for the season of Epiphany or for the whole year. Uh, and then I would also like to welcome you to our adult forum as we study the Exodus. We are on, we're in the middle of the plague, so a good time to join us for that. Um, and then also we have uh, more plans and pictures on the table for the design for flooring and uh, paint. So make sure you take a look at that. Thank you for all of those of you who have responded. I uh, hope you've read through the mini bits to kind of uh, track through uh, the conversation that's been happening. Um, and I invite you to continue that conversation, get your questions asked, uh, have the discussion you need to have so that at the end of the month when we come to our annual meeting, uh, we're ready to uh, make a decision. So please uh, um, talk to um, any council members or our long range planning committee. Uh, there's paper and pencil there or you can send emails uh, to me and I will pass on to the Long Range Planning Committee. All right, and uh, then on uh, this past Thursday, Jerry Keel's wife, Mary Lou, uh, passed away. Funeral services will be at Holy Trinity in North Liberty on Monday, January 23rd at three o'clock with Holy Communion. There'll be a visitation prior to the worship from one to three on that Monday. All right, and then any other announcements? All right, then I invite you to stand if you are able and join me in our order of confession and forgiveness found on page two in your worship bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, let us that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, Forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you and joyfully find you, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. first reading today is from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1 through 7. A reading from Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword, and in the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I've spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, 
and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 40, verses 1 through 7, and be sung antiphonally. The second reading for today is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, 
so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which, trans which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite our kids forward. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good. Oh, it's so good to see you and have you here today. Um, you know that I love God's Word a lot, and I like studying it. Well, when, when I was looking at the passage from Isaiah, which Jennifer was the first one that was read, there were two really uh, intriguing images things that captured my attention that uh, the prophet Isaiah was writing about. Can you guess what caught my attention? This might be a clue. Yes, an arrow. What else? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. A knife. Well, actually... It says a sword. I don't have a sword. This is the best I could do. And then I can cover it really carefully like that so I don't have to worry about injuring myself or someone else. 
Do you know what it says about that? What do you think it might say about a sword and an arrow? It's kind of really strange. The prophet Isaiah wants us to think really differently. He talks about being a servant, a servant of God, and that God is going to do something with a sword and an arrow. Do you know what it is? It says, he made my mouth like a sharp sword. What do you think? Isn't that strange? Like that? What do you think it means? What do you think it means to use our, that God is going to make God's servant mouth like a sharp sword? Does that like stir your curiosity at all? It does mine. Oh my goodness. And then he says that God will make God's servant like a polished arrow. So mine's not, mine's just kind of, no, no touching. I'm not going to have little fingers on this. It's not very, it's pretty dull. It's a blunt point. But a, a polished arrow, what do you think that means? Are we God's servants? Yeah, we are God's servants, aren't we? What does this mean for us to have that God would make our mouths into a sharp sword and, our, and make us into a polished arrow? Wow. Do I have you stumped? Are you going to think about that for a long time? Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. Oh, maybe an hour? Well, that would be a long time. I think that would be fabulous. And then, yeah, gosh, the weird things that humans do with these things. And God is doing something really different. He's saying that a weapon, that our mouths could maybe, that the words that come out of our mouth could be sharp and could be a good tool. Do you think a sword could be a good tool, a handy tool? To be your servants. Help us to think a long, long time about what this means for us. Shine your light in our lives. We love you. And you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, happy thinking and wondering and pondering. Oh, yeah, let me put my, my tools away so I don't hurt anyone. Aim at something. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yes. That is a curiosity, isn't it? you are around when I have to meet my day. I don't want a long funeral. And if you get someone to deliver the eulogy, tell them not to talk too long. Tell them them not to mention that I have a Nobel Peace Prize. That isn't important.
this and that reminds us that we serve Jesus when we feed the hungry and clothe the naked and visit the sick and those in prison. What do you think about Martin Luther King Jr.'s wonderings? It's a good exercise to think about what will be said of us when we meet our day. What do our lives give witness to? What do we reveal about God to others? How are we helping each other to see God and to shine a light? Each of the characters we meet in our gospel, John, Andrew, Simon, all show us something about God revealed in Jesus as they name and describe Jesus. Being a disciple, being a witness of Jesus is about telling others who Jesus is for us. Use your words. Talk about who Jesus is and our relationship with Jesus. What has God revealed to you through Jesus? How are we in remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. John tells everyone that Jesus is God's chosen one, that Jesus is the Son of God. Andrew and another of John's disciples follow Jesus and they see him to be a teacher and they spend time with him. Andrew goes to tell his brother Simon that Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed. What do we see and how do we invite others to come, come and see? Michael Cobbler and his mother invites us to come and see. See Jesus as a stealer of sin because Jesus takes away the sin of the world. You know, we often think of it, well, yeah, Jesus removes our sin, washes it away. But have you thought about Jesus stealing? Stealing our sins? Ripping them off? Michael was grateful that his mother invited him to come and see what sin stealing looked like. It was an early spring morning long ago, and his mother made him his favorite lunch for school, chocolate milk a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and fresh baked chocolate chip cookies. Off he went, looking forward to this to the lunchtime that was ahead of him. But a block and a half of away, he was face to face with June Bug, the bully of the block. Give me that lunch, punk. But June Bug, that's my lunch. You better give me that lunch, but it's mine. My mom made it for me, and she made my favorite, and June Bug's right upper cut sent him and his lunch to the ground. June Bug picked up the lunch and said, that's what you get for not listening to me, and he went off to school. Michael went off to school as well with no lunch and a lot of anger. At home that late afternoon, he was very silent. And his mother asked, what happened in school today? I'm going to kill him. What? I'm going to kill him. Who do you plan to kill? Junebug. He beat me up. He stole my lunch. And I'm going to kill him. His mother thought for a while and then said, here, have some food. And don't start your homework right away. There's something that we need to do together. But you must do as I say. 
The next morning, he saw Junebug in front of the school. Junebug pointed to Michael and said, Oh, here's that punk I stole cookies from you. Yesterday. And Michael walked up to him. The punk brought me cookies. Isn't that great? The next day, Michael saw Junebug during recess, and he walked up to him and he gave him a bag of cookies. Junebug, here are some more cookies. Take them, they're free. God asks, is it too light a thing that you should be my servant? world. We are light. Light that helps us to see and helps others to see Jesus. Use your words. Come and see. Amen.
everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Put a new song in the mouth of your church. Inspire the baptized to tell of your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of missionaries, especially the Saha family, serving in Bangladesh. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. The waters of baptism call us into life in the spirit. Preserve the world's waters, protect them from pollution, support plants and animals who depend on them, and bring rain in places of drought. Guide us in protecting local waterways and in responding to devastating floods. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Fill governing bodies with righteousness. Equip judges with discernment and compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You incline your ear to all who cry to you. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence, injustice, illness, or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness to all in need. <coughs> we pray especially for Joanne Rogers and the family of Mary Lucia. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are glorified in the servants you have called. With Martin Luther King Jr., give us bold trust in even when it feels like a sharp sword or a polished arrow, give us courage to receive your call to repentance and racial justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In every place and time, you have sanctified your people. We praise you for the testimony of those who have died in the faith. Strengthen us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Share a sign of God's peace with one another.
pride, our duty, and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. and has promised to come again. We await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your spirit, bless us and this meal, that, ref that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing... Go ahead and pull those out now and take the seal off of the wafer portion of that. And when you have that ready, if you would please hold it up. This is the body of Christ given for you. And then remove the seal from the wine or the grape juice. And when you have that ready, if you would hold that up. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.